And we're talking about Insomnia from 1997, directed by Eric Schuldberg. There's been a murder. A man has killed a young girl. A Norwegian police detective, Eric Vik, and a Swede now working in Norway, Jonas Engström, are sent to investigate. They investigate. The girl, uh, the girl seemed to be cut off from her friends. Something was going on. There might have been another guy. Details are scarce, but there seemed to be a secret there. Uh, and no, this movie isn't Twin Peaks. Um, mm. There's further investigation. Uh, and then a guy is found, uh, but the arrest is botched. The Swede, Engstrom, kills his partner by accident. But instead of admitting his mistake, lies about the suspect being the culprit. And now the suspect knows he didn't do it and has something to hold over Engstrom's head. Suspense ensues. And Mm -hmm. that's essentially the story up here. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, And I guess the whole backdrop to it is that it is set in northern Norway, which mm-hmm. is a unique part of the world where uh, for months on end during certain times of the year, during the, I guess the winter for there, uh, mm-hmm. it's summer and uh, the sun is out all the time. There's no night. And this proves to be a problem for a southerner like uh, Engstrom who does not get sleep. And mm-hmm. this, I guess, is getting to him. Right. So um, my history with this movie is I had never seen it before. Um, I remember first hearing about this movie early on in the days of finding out about the Criterion Collection and, you know, skimming through all the titles in there mm-hmm. and being like, oh, Insomnia. Oh, it's like a crime movie. Oh, it's about like a murdered girl. And Oh, man, mm-hmm. this movie sounds awesome. Like, this sounds so up my alley. But I mean, this mm-hmm. is, of course, back when, like, you'd actually have to buy these movies and track them down. And that was, like, di- more difficult to do. And then, RJ, mm-hmm. Warner, Br- Warner Brothers came along. <laughs> And they sure did. They had uh, this Christopher Nolan guy direct a remake of this movie, uh, mm-hmm. starring movie stars like Al Pacino and Robin Williams and yes, yes. Uh, Hilary Swank. And they they made this movie, which I saw. And uh, I don't know, Insomnia. The the idea of watching the remake was always like kind of in my mind. Like, oh, I should definitely check it out because you know yeah. it's like the original, and you know what, it's going to be better and blah blah blah. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, this, there's always something else to watch. And one of the purposes of doing this podcast, this whole project is to get through all the movies. And it's now brought me here to watching insomnia, the original. Yes. Yes. Um, so, uh, I'll just kind of start talking about the movie, I guess. So the opening, sure. the opening credits, uh, it's very like the first thing that popped in my mind is like, Oh, this movie came out post seven. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. This is, it's kind of weird watching this movie now because like the whole opening montage, you get the, um, the not Robin Williams character, Mm -hmm. like struggling with this girl. And then she winds up with her head going through a nail that's happened to be on the wall. And it's an accidental death. We all, we know this all. And Mm -hmm. then I'm like, but I'm watching this movie and I'm like, oh, I've seen, I have seen this movie. Cause I've seen the Nolan movie and mm-hmm. then like, there's like the, the cleaning of the bodies and like, it's like very like, Oh, this is like seven. This is like seven. Um, and then I'm like, sure. Oh, it's like serial killer stuff. And then I'm like that eight millimeter film that it's shot in. I don't know if it's aged that well. It's very mm-hmm. much of the nineties. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, I start realizing as this movie's going, this is really like, like the remake of this is like beat for beat in a lot of ways. Like a lot of the stuff is just there. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is the funny thing. There is something missing in the storytelling and pacing in this version that Nolan definitely adds to things that I think makes it an improvement (laughs) um, Mm -hmm. over over this version. Um, Because for the most part, this movie feels like a, I don't know if you've watched very much British television crime shows, but up until the the scene where uh, Engstrom kills his partner, this felt like very like conventional. And I was kind of like, huh, why is this a movie? <laughs> Cause it felt like exactly mm-hmm. like uh, an episode of um, uh, cracker or something like that. Uh, like, sure. Like any of this, like British stuff I've watched from the nineties or from this era, it's like very like stripped down low budget. Uh, it's like all these big city detectives coming into a small community to investigate something. And you can tell mm-hmm. the story over the course of one episode, very basic stuff. Um, but so yeah, I don't know. 
Um, I'll, I'll talk. We'll talk more about the movie as we go. But my feelings on this is this movie's okay. It's not a bad movie, but uh, I didn't uh, have time to watch the Christopher Nolan Insomnia this uh, week. But I watched it a year ago, and I watched all mm-hmm. of Christopher Nolan's movies like in one go again. And uh, I got to say that I think it's like a much better movie. Right. Yep. Okay. So. To you. As we, to me. <laughs> as we teased last week, this is a rare, rare time where this is a movie that I not only own that you don't, but I have seen before and you haven't. And I think people, I think I've let it slip a few times that I am a big fan of Mr. Christopher Nolan. Uh, he's my, my number one guy, like uh, Bob and Jackie Nicholson. Some people will get that. Uh, anyways, so I've always held the Nolan one in high regard. And I, when I found out that there was the original uh, and Criterion and all that, I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to buy that because I love that Nolan movie. And it's the only Nolan movie that's a remake. And uh, I think I've later deduced that, oh, yeah, this is probably a studio movie. Like he made Memento and the studio was like, let's see what you can do. Mm-hmm. Make this. And uh, I think this is like. I would say this is probably his only studio movie because this is the only one or for Nolan. It was the only one he didn't write and it was the only anyways. Yeah. I'll, get, I'll get to Nolan stuff later. So for Insomnia, I've seen this before and uh, I watched it about a year or two ago maybe when I bought it. Right. And I was very much the same that you are. I was of the same opinion. I was like, man, I like Nolan's more. I don't know if it's just because I saw that first and I remember it better. It's like all these things are kind of beat for beat. Uh, I just, I didn't think much of it. I was like, it's good, but you know, yeah. it's not super good. Right. Uh, watching it again this week. Yep. Uh, it was a big improvement. Okay. I actually enjoyed this a lot more on a second watch. Hmm. And I think part of it was because I had, going into it, I had high expectations because I hold Chris Nolan up on this pedestal. Pedestal. Hmm. And uh, I was like, I want to see this thing that he made. And I watched it and I was like, huh, that's it, huh? All right. Well, I guess I was like, I I always have the Nolan one. Watching it this time, I I went in with kind of lower expectations because I was like, I've seen it. I know how it plays out. I know I like the remake more. Uh, And I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, Okay. There's a a lot of stuff that I uh, I like in it. Um, I think one of the biggest things is like, the color palette like it's so bland and bright yeah. and i think that's one thing this movie or one of the things this movie did a way better than the remake is it really kind of sticks like this desolate area where it's like up in norway everything's like really like washed out a bit more dreary than the dreary. kind of uh, picturesque alaskan wilderness exactly yeah. exactly so um i I guess on the whole, I actually enjoyed the uh, the original Insomnia uh, a lot more this time. I thought it was really good. Um, and because I can't avoid it because I need to compare the two. Uh, I watched the Christopher Nolan one last night too. Yep. So uh, I watched it back to back like on consecutive days. And I've always been a strong advocate for that Christopher Nolan one. And watching it this time... Uh, it fell a little flat for me. Um, it's mm. definitely the weakest Nolan movie, which I think is still says a lot. Like, I mean, it's still a good movie, but uh, um, I I don't know. It was kind of weird. Like, uh, it, I didn't expect I would have that opinion at all. Like, um, I still like it, uh, but so the parts of the Nolan movie that are the same as Insomnia, the original, th- that's where it's not good because it's just beat for beat remake. Um, and I was like, well. I was like, I kind of like the the original version, the way they present that. Uh, I think mm. the parts of the Nolan movie, which are really good, are where they kind of run away with, run away with the story, and they differ from the original. And that it's like what you were saying before. That's not really what I had thought original, like before when I first watched this. Right. I was like, oh no, that Nolan one, like the parts that were way better, like he he shows it way better. Um, I thought that for a long time, but uh, going back to it, I don't know. Uh, mm. So my point, I guess, was uh, I think this movie really warrants a rewatch. Okay. Uh, not anytime soon, but I think definitely if you had watched the Christopher Nolan one first and then you watch this one, I think it kind of 
taint your viewing a little bit. I think I I would uh, almost guarantee that's the case <laughs> for me. Yeah, yeah. It, so it kind of it kind of blocks your the way you watch it a little bit. But um, yeah. Well, because like the whole time I just kept having deja vu and be like, I've seen this, but I've seen it like I don't know better, the, the, better, the, right? The, 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 it's shot yeah. like it's shot uh, so beautifully. And it's mm-hmm. like in, in the uh, remake, the music, the mm-hmm. you have like movie stars and the the pacing. It seems like okay. So my big thing that I felt was lacking in the uh, night, like this original movie that we're yeah. actually supposed to be talking about. But exactly. I find, I I, but, but I think this is interesting because like we actually have like two remakes. Like we have a remake to talk bounce it off of, mm-hmm. and where it's like very similar, and we can really contrast filmmaking techniques and like mm-hmm. uh, sensing like in this like what works and what doesn't um like yeah. i felt like this movie did not really utilize the like midnight sun aspect like it didn't drive that home as well i think yeah. as like nolan does where he really gets into like the fact that it's like so it's it's hot. it's like not only is it bright but it's also it seems blisteringly hot and bright right and like you really get into the sense of like uh al pacino is like losing his mind and he's getting mm-hmm. like more hangdog and dreary whereas i yeah. find that um here um uh stellingard's like Stellan. Yeah, uh, his, like, performance is, like, way more, uh, I think I've seen the word, uh, like, oh, it's, like, opalesque or opaly. Like, I don't know. It's, like, I've seen it pop up a few times. What does that mean? Um, it's, like, he he's evasive. Like, he, even, like, okay. his, like, his complexion is, like, kind of waxy. Uh, opaque. That's the word I'm trying to come up with. Opaque. Uh, okay, okay. So he's, like, I mean, like, whereas, like, Al Pacino is run down, rugged old Al Pacino. Oh, he's yeah. that's what he he just like looks like a like he's beef jerky walking mm-hmm. around and his his voice is <laughs> worn down yeah. b- and like weathered. Um mm-hmm. here um he he's not like um yeah. He's I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to get a uh, a finger down on him. And even like what he's done mm-hmm. in the past, like the whole like uh exchange about like him like spying on his colleagues mm-hmm. talking about him walking in while like having sex with a mm-hmm. um uh witness, which like yeah. I'm like when I first was watching this, I was like, "Wait, what did he do?" Like it, it was seems so, yeah. so vague because I I remembered really in the uh, yep. the Nolan movie that it's like, "Oh no, there was like some question about corruption." Like like there was like mm-hmm. a real like it was very nailed down because it's an American <laughs> movie, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, that's the biggest thing, definitely, is that the motivation for why he like can't just come out with it is like given to you like right away like you you totally understand it's like yeah he can't say that or like he can't just come clean with it because everyone's watching what he does with this guy so the motivation is definitely clear right in the the remake but um i was gonna say i think watching both of these uh it really shows the contrast between american cinema and like say european cinema Yeah, yeah, because yeah. so the original one uh they don't like kind of hand feed you anything um they don't have like mass blocks of exposition they're not like uh like they f- think you you'll connect the dots the american one uh like nolan's version there is some of that where there's like there's guys like spouting off like things that it's like yeah i know where it's like like putting too much air into a balloon <laughs> it's like it's like yeah i get it and like i see that's what i mean like i don't blame I don't think it had anything to do with him because someone else wrote the screenplay for this. And I really think this was the movie that he just had to make for the studio before he was kind of allowed to run free a little bit. Yeah. Um, but no, I actually I thought the same thing that you did. I was like, I really think the Nolan one nails certain things better, like the uh, like the actual brightness and stuff like that. And then when I watched it, I was like, I was like, it does but not as much as I remembered it. Mm. So I don't know if that says something, but I think the Nolan one left such an impression on me like 15 years ago when it came out yeah. that I had uh, built it up in such a way where I was like, oh man, it does this better, it does this better. Mm. And then actually re-watching them, I was like, I do think it does a lot of those things better, but uh, not to the grand, uh, like the grand scale that I had built it up in okay. my own head. Okay. If that if that makes sense. Okay. So yeah, and like I'm not I'm not trying to shit on Nolan's either. I still really mm, like that movie. Yeah. So I just uh, watching them both. Yeah. My thing, I guess, is that at the end of the day, I don't really like like uh, Nolan's Insomnia that much. Like it's just okay, yeah. but it's like not like I don't know. It's not memorable. It's pretty generic. Like it comes off like a Hollywood remake. Um, but I guess like I was like it was just so weird because like I watched it and then watching the original. 
I just mm-hmm. like, man, it's like, this seems like so uninteresting. It's, it's the story though, too. I don't know. Yeah. It's like pretty like, um, I don't know. I was reading about uh Nordic noir RJ. Mm-hmm. Cause like, I don't know if you've uh, read any of that stuff. Like uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo. Um, yes. so there's that type of thing. And like, I tried reading that book. Uh, like I thought it was just like absolute shit. Like I thought that was just like garbage. And, Can I be uh, straight with you, Papa? Sure. I read 200 pages and then I put it down and I never read it again. Yeah. So anyway, um, sorry. So, anyway, so like this, like I don't know, like crime genre stuff. It's got to be pretty good or interesting to like draw you in. And this seems like mm-hmm. fairly simple, even though it's got this great like kind of high concept, which I think is what was kind of why Nolan would have even wound up doing it. Cause this whole idea of like, yeah. Oh, it's a place without sun. It's like, mm-hmm. what if people broke into people's dreams? What if a guy right. uh, couldn't remember 10 minutes ago and we edited it that way. That's like always kind mm-hmm. of been his thing. So insomnia kind of like, there's that kernel of an idea. Um, but at the end of the mm-hmm. day, it's sort of just what it is. Um, and so yep. my first real note about this movie uh, is vomiting in the alley, the barking dog, interesting scenes to carry over between both films because I mm-hmm. totally forgot RJ about the fact that he goes back to that alley to shoot the dog to get a bullet to match. <laughs> you, you you know what though? What? They uh, they try to save face for Pacino Yeah, because it, it would be against character in the remake. The dog is already dog. dead. Yes. And I remember, and I was like, oh, like, that's, because I was like, because it's like, yeah, you get this, like, really grotesque scene in the original of him, like, Mm -hmm. digging out a bullet, which I guess is just there to, like, make you really hate this guy, which, like, he's not particularly likable up to this point, and this isn't giving, doing him any favors. Yeah. Um, He's, he's, like, not likable at all in the whole movie, where, like, for Pacino, I think it's, like, he has to be likable because everyone knows fucking Al Pacino. They're yeah. Like this, everyone loves this guy. He's Al but, Pacino. Uh, He's yeah. Ser- no, Serpico uh, himself. Serpico. Yeah. I thought the same stuff. And uh, yeah, like the Nolan one, it, it's beat for beat. And all they do is they kind of elaborate a little bit more. They give uh there's a little more breathing room where like, like I mean, yeah. like in, in the original one, like they don't, waste any time like yeah. telling you what's going on yeah they, they i think they just f- they think that you're gonna figure it out it's like yeah the audience can figure out like how we jump from a to c like we don't need to fill in all the gaps right but uh i would say definitely like uh because i i was the exact same thought of you but uh, the repeated watching or the the rewatch it uh it was really, it was a lot better. So I'd say hmm. give it like two years and mm-hmm. watch this thing again. And I, and that's weird. But well, like, well, folks, uh, when we uh, re-record all of our Criterion Creep watches, like yeah. we'll watch the movies again. We'll again. St- we'll start at number one. We'll work our way up. And when we get to Insomnia, uh, we'll, we'll see how I feel about it then. But I, I, I mean, I can totally buy it. Yeah. I, I accept exactly what you're saying. I probably, uh, yeah. you're right. Like it probably is now that, uh, it's 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 watching it in that order, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, like I don't know if a lot of remakes will have that same power because maybe they're yeah. not so beat for beat, or there'll be like different qualities. So it's like it's really weird how similar they are, I guess, and like how much it's stuck to the uh, original. Because actually, we will be uh, sooner than later. We're going to be watching the Vanishing, mm-hmm. and there's that there's the American remake of that, which I have not seen, but I, I think that yeah. movie uh, completely. Uh, shits the bed from my understanding yeah. but we'll find well, out then and there yeah. so that's the thing too most uh most remakes don't have a uh, fucking mega all-star chris nolan at the helm so right they can't all benefit from having the the best out there but uh yeah i don't know man like i uh, i enjoyed this one a lot more on the rewatch and okay. um so since the uh, yeah. since the remake is uh, fresh in your mind, RJ, uh, yeah. how, was was there finger banging in the Christopher Nolan version? What? Oh no, uh, <laughs> no, no! Actually, that scene's actually played really funny. Yeah, um, no, like that's that was my memory because I was watching this. I was like, whoa, yeah. this guy's a cretin! Mm-hmm. Like he's he's a real fucking weird dude. Because yeah, because then we also get the uh, attempted sexual assault by the protagonist later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the weirdest box of kitten scene you'll ever see. Yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, that it's actually played for um, played pretty fun. Like uh, Pacino's digging through the trash, and he's like, "And garbage," <laughs> like that Pacino way. And he's like, "You'll feel right at home here, toots." Uh, and you're just like, because yeah. you and you root for him. You're like, you yeah, you tell that you tell that bitch. Wow. It's like she she was sleeping around on her best friend, mm-hmm. and uh, you just. 
you can't help but be like, yeah, man, you did it, Pacino. Mm-hmm. But uh, it actually, my my only uh, notes about the remake is about Pacino. Uh, because, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll save those. Save those. Okay. Okay. Uh, Share your notes about the original film that we're actually supposed okay. to be talking about. Well, so I, I did kind of touch on most of that stuff. Like uh, like we were saying, I actually like the opening. I think it's a cool cold open where it's just like you just watch a guy kill a girl. Yeah. And like without any context. Right. I think that's good. Uh, like I said, like the bland washed out palette of everything, uh, I think paints how like why the people are trying to get out of this place and kind of the environment really good. Uh, the girl's got a sweet Keanu Reeves poster in her room. I thought that was awesome. Uh, there is a scene where Stellan Skarsgård is trying to sleep with his watch on. And I feel like that's really stupid. <laughs> and I know people do that, but it's like, of course you can't sleep. You got a watch on. But how do people sleep with watches on? I, I sleep with a Fitbit on all the time. How the fuck do you do that? Uh, very easily. Doesn't he, that bother you? Not in the least. You are a weird dude. You're a weird dude. Um, There's a scene at the end where Stellan Skarsgård goes over to the bed and it is well, well below his knees. So Mm -hmm. he's either like seven foot five or the beds in Norway are super small. That's quite possible. Quite possible. Uh, Yeah, no, I don't know. I I liked it. Um, I really liked it this time. There's a lot of things and there's a lot of things that I liked. Like so generic here. (sighs) Uh, I don't know. I think the interplay with the other cops is a lot better in this one. Um, in the Nolan one, there's like, like I like Hillary Swank, but at the end, it's kind of weird where she's like, she's like trying. She's like, nobody's got to know Al Pacino that you mm. like did this, and he's yes. like, be tr- he's like, be true to yourself. Don't don't, baby. Com- don't compromise yourself. See, now you're back to Nolan already. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, I know, so, but it's, it's hey, hard we, not we, to. We haven't even we haven't really even talked about like the villain of like the the movie. The, uh, Stellan Skarsgård? No, well, the 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 actual the actual killer, the, the killer, the yeah, crime, too, Mr. Crime writer John Holt. Yeah, it's too hard for me not to picture Robin Williams, even while oh, watching the original, where I'm oh, like, this guy's not Robin Williams. Yeah, during a yeah Robin Williams dark phase, his like yeah. uh, his trilogy of like Death to Smoochie mm-hmm. and uh, One Hour Photo and Insomnia. He, he's really good in this movie, though. I, I like Robin Williams. I think he's really good in these movies. Anyways, <laughs> do both but, these uh, movies. <laughs> both these movies. Yeah, the original, the uh, the villain. Like he's good. He fits the role yeah. pretty good. But um, I don't know. <sighs> yeah, I don't know, man. What do you What do you think? I, I don't know. I agree. Um, my only other big note here is is the ending here better than the Nolan movie? Yes. Because yeah, the I, ending of this movie is a freeze frame of glowing <laughs> eyes in the dark. Eyes wide com- open. Because his eyes it, never get to close, RJ. His eyes never get to close. And uh, I forgot that that was how it ended. And then when I watched it, I was like, my God. <laughs> like, it's. I think it's really funny. Um, it's, it's ballsy, that's for sure. It's I, ballsy. I, 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 I kind of like, I don't know, you could like laugh at it. I don't know if a movie yeah, could pull that funny. off now. Because it's like, 20, no. like oh god, that movie's twenty. This movie's twenty years old now. That's nuts. could. Could you imagine if one of those Marvel movies where it's just like Iron Man? He's like, I sure learned how to be a, a man again. And then it zoomed in on his face and it went dark, but his eyes were still lit. Or like Cyclops's visor. Yeah. And then underneath it just said, "Stay woke." And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even mention oh, how woke. Oh, woke. Yeah. God damn. Well, they, they can't sleep, Jer. Oh, um, yeah. So fun times, fun times. Um, I'll throw out there. Uh, I actually, I actually, uh, thought to read the essay that accompanied this release. Cause you lent me your Blu-ray. No, uh, Jonathan Romney. This is like r- the first paragraph to him. Uh, talking about Schulberg described the film as a reversed film noir with light, not darkness as its dramatic force. So one could call it a film blanc. Blanc film. meaning white, but also blank, given the film's detached chill, as opaque as the features of its policeman antihero. Damn. Um, you know, I I, I, uh, I read the essay, and I think I actually enjoyed reading about the movie in essay form more than watching the movie. Watching. And I didn't like, again, it's not a bad movie. Uh, again, like as we, when we talked about uh, Taste of Cherry, it was it's like such a breath of fresh air to watch like contemporary movies that have like... Yeah. Uh, 
you know, modern storytelling and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. Like this movie is just like very okay to me. Uh, and a lot of that comes down to, I think the story and it's like, it's just not a yep. story I particularly like. And it's the same thing with the yep. Nolan movie. I, I, I would put this as like Nolan's third worst movie, which is still not bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That doesn't, it's doesn't say much. I mean, all his movies are wicked, so whatever. Yeah. Whatever. They're all wicked. But uh, I was going to say the last thing I'll say about the Nolan one, because I know I've been talking about that a lot, but I can't stop. Uh, my only notes are about Al Pacino and his stunt double. Oh, so okay. In, in this movie, Al Pacino is 62 years old when yep. they filmed this movie. And he is in a lot of scenes where he's chasing down perps. He's running over logs. He's doing all this real man stuff. Yeah. And if you watch closely, it is fucking amazing to see because it'll (laughs) zoom up on Al Pacino and he's not even moving. His arms are just going and he's like, (laughs) yeah, yeah. And then it'll, it'll cut to a back shot of like, like a guy who's clearly 30 years younger, like full on sprinting, like, like really ripping through. And it's like, it's like, yeah, I know. That's not a big thing, but it was so, it's just, it's really funny to watch. Like, it's just like, I can't believe Al Pacino is doing this. And like in the scenes where he's running, he does this really weird thing with his mouth where he's like, like he's like chomping at the air or something. Like he's never ran before in his life and he doesn't know like how your face should be. He's like, oh man, you gotta, you gotta rewatch some of uh, vintage uh, Al Pacino, some Glengarry Glenn Ross. He did Pacino. Yeah, man. Yeah. He's, uh, anyway, I he's just an I thought that was really funny because he's old and clearly old and like they're yeah. getting him to do all these like because it's good casting too. like me and Andrew were even talking about this is like do you think Pacino was just cast because he's already so old and tired yeah that it's like he can play the tired guy real good yeah and it's like yeah he does he plays tired guy really good because he is old and tired right but uh yeah no I just those those uh chase scenes with him are pretty fun right they're pretty fun, man. Fun. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I like the original a lot more than I did. That's so good. That's what I'll say about this that, movie. That, that is, gives it hope. Maybe I'll have yeah. to uh, watch it again two years from now. <laughs> give it give it like two years and then watch it again and you'll be like, yeah, this was pretty good. Clean the palate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. well, RJ, maybe uh, several other people should also watch this movie again in two years because this Uh-oh. movie, it's got some hate. I can see that. So yeah. who hates this movie? Uh, uh, a constant factor, it seems, sometimes in who hates this movie, Fat Pie 42 uh, It's been a while since uh, I've uh, come across any of his comments. That's um, gross. The original movie, which Christopher Nolan remade, both movies are similarly dull, dreary, and disappointing. While this version <laughs> contains some rather more subtle acting from Stellan Skarsgård, rather than the overacting we saw from Al Pacino and Robin Williams, he's rather difficult to sympathize, sympathize with. In the end, I felt the movie... Yeah, exactly. Uh, I felt the movie was a less than pleasant experience without much to justify it. And then he says to go to his blog to read his full review. No. Wow. No, Fat No. Boy. We will not give you that click today. Um, somebody here called Ethne gave this movie two stars and they had the hot take of just as boring as Twin Peaks, but with a more subdued color palette. Huh? Yeah. Just as boring. Hey, just, as I don't boring. think I've ever heard anyone describe Twin Peaks as boring. <sighs> yeah. Not, not anyone worth paying attention to like Ethne. E- 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 nice uh, burn. A Genty gave this two stars. Much more straightforward than I expected. Skarsgård performance is okay, but I'd have liked to get a better feel for Engstrom. Is he as terrible as he seems at first, or is he an okay guy in an abysmal situation? That seems like an important question to answer, but neither Skarsgård nor the script really make it clear, and that ambiguity makes a lot of Engstrom's unpleasant actions seem that much worse. Uh, Schkoldberg does play some interesting tricks with apparent eyeline matches as Engstrom breaks down, finding ways to depict hallucinating that match my own experiences with sleep deprivation pretty well, but those moments can oh. elevate the rest of the film. Now I'm really curious to see what Nolan does with this material. So that's interesting, someone watching it in order. Yeah, but uh, this guy's always also like, I do my own sleep deprivation experiments, and I also <laughs> test on myself. 
I've uh, hey, I I beat up a girl once and she died from a nail in the hole in her head. She was fine. She didn't die at all. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. <laughs> this is a liar this movie. This is fake bullshit. Um, yeah. And then from actual legitimate film critic uh, Mike D'Angelo, he gave this oh. two and a half stars. He had some words for it. Mm-hmm. Found found this even more underwhelming the second time. Really, Criterion? Nolan's remake is one of his weakest films, but he still improved upon the original in many respects, most notably by devising a plausible reason for the anti-hero to cover up the accidental shooting. Skarsgård's mm-hmm. performance is more compellingly opaque, see, opaque, ah, than Pacino's, okay. but he still can't sell that initial self-serving decision, much less its increasingly ugly chain of after-effects. The film turns into Bad Lieutenant minus the anguish, which is really just garden variety sordidness. It's apropos, RJ, that Engstrom's oh, abortive assault on the motel desk clerk takes place against the wall of toilet paper rolls. Uh, Skoldberg um, doesn't even do much with the ever-present glare of the midnight sun, paying little attention to the time of day except when Engstrom is lying awake in bed, which I completely agree with. Um, yeah. Like, you didn't get the sense of the time of day, really. And it seemed like mm-hmm. anybody was like, 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 hey, what are you getting some sleep? Like, the whole idea of, hey, you need to get some sleep. That wasn't mm-hmm. played up too much, not as much as the Nolan, which, again, is like American <clears throat> sensibilities, I think. Yeah. Um, and, of course, uh, here at the end, looking at his filmography since, uh, filmography since, and I endured something called Pioneer, I feel wholly yeah. vindicated in my 1998 dismissal. So here's one guy who I guess uh, waited like like 15 years before going back to it and was still not a fan. Um, yeah. yeah, that's the other thing with uh, Mr. Uh, director here, uh, Scholdberg. Sch- Sch- His mm-hmm. filmography is super underwhelming. He's only made like I think I think it was eight feature films. He yeah. had like two short films that are also included on the Criterion Blu-ray, and then he's mm-hmm. directed a bunch of stuff. He tried going to America to make movies, didn't work out, and then he directed this movie with Wes Bentley, I think called uh oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and it's like yeah he didn't he didn't he didn't take off he didn't set the world on well, fire that's fine i don't need more movies from him but uh i was gonna say uh the time of day uh like in the two movies nolan does do that good but it also has something i absolutely hate like so pacino does it pretty good where he's like let's go pull that kid out of school and they're like it's 10 and he's like you bet it is and they're like p uh yeah. and then there's this fucking piece of shit actor named uh nikki cat oh don't you say anything bad about nick cat oh. nikki cat is such a piece of shit why do you like him he's... and he he like laughs he's like <laughs> yeah you got him he's also <laughs> i i don't i hate him because he's in the dark knight and he says the the perfect movie the only blemish on that entire movie is he's driving the swat car or the truck and you know what he fucking says I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> Fuck you, you piece of shit. It's like, yeah, of course you did. You're a fucking SWAT like guy. Uh, so I, I hate that piece of shit. Why do you like him? He sucks. Uh, have you ever seen the Limey? No. Okay, you should watch the Limey. Steven Soderbergh's the Limey. He he's got a good. He he yeah. gets a pass in that movie, and then he also plays like an actor playing Hitler in uh, another uh, Steven Soderbergh movie, Full Frontal. That's why he's in uh, Insomnia then, because uh, I don't know if you know this, but the two producers on the Nolan remake were Steven Soderbergh and Mr. George Clooney. There you go. He's one of their boys. So good old fashioned Hollywood. Yeah. Okay. He uh, sucks. I don't care. <laughs> I hate him. Nobody cares. He didn't sign up for this. He didn't. Yes, you did. Oh my god. <sighs> well, I hate it, Jared. And I hope other people will will grow to hate that as well. And see how dumb it is. <laughs> well, I hope that uh, we'll brand it so when people do hear it, they'll just think about how much you hate it, and then they'll like start enjoying it out of spite. <sighs> oh fuck! Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Okay, spite yeah. is fine. Spite's a, gr- a great thing. Uh, makes spite. the world go around. Mm-hmm. Uh, any last thoughts, RJ, before we wrap this one up? Uh, my opinion better on a second viewing. So, if you were felt underwhelmed, give it another shot. Okay. There you have it. Uh, after the break, uh, we are going to finally be able to close our eyes after another episode. Are you going to kill me tonight? <laughs>